Subgrouping can really improve the sound of your mix by allowing you to process a group of tracks together like a mix within a mix. It also speeds up your workflow, gives you more control, and helps to keep your whole project organized. So I'll show you how to create a subgroup, which is pretty easy, but I'm also going to teach you why we subgroup certain tracks together, which combinations work the best, and how to process and treat each subgroup in context of the overall mix, so you'll get a better mix. And then I'm going to show you what not to do and the dangers of adding a track to the wrong subgroup. Coming up. Hi, Artie Sky here from the Skyland Music Group in New York City. Please like, subscribe, comment, join our Facebook group. Okay, let's get started. Subgrouping is taking a group of tracks and routing the audio to the same aux channel so we could process them all together as a group instead of each one individually. But subgrouping by itself won't change the sound one tiny bit. It's just another way of routing the audio. So you can think of it like getting smaller mixes within your main mix, but it's what you do with that subgroup, how you process it, that's going to make the difference. So let's quickly get the how to do it out of the way. In Logic, it's one step, in Pro Tools, it's three steps, but it's basically the same process for whatever DAW you're using. Just highlight the tracks in the mix window, click on the stereo output, select an available bus, and voila! You subgrouped and a new aux track was created. The output level, mute, and panning of all the channels you selected are now controlled by that subgroup. It's a mix within your mix. So that's how to subgroup. Pretty easy. But now let's really talk about why you would subgroup. So let's break it down to the main categories, and I'll give you a few examples using subgroups for synthesizers, drums, kick and bass, and vocals. This way you could see and hear it in action, and you'll get a better idea of how to use it in your own productions to bring your mix up to another level. Let's start with synthesizers. So very often you're processing each track on its own. You have different EQ curves, different compressors, reverbs, stereo spread, and so on. So why do you want a subgroup? One reason is that it's easier to control the volume, automation, and muting of the synths as a whole when balancing it against the drums, bass, and vocals. But another reason it's done so much in modern pop and dance music is that we can put a sidechain compressor across the whole subgroup so we can have all the keyboards get that pumping sound that we hear so much in EDM, club, and pop music. So here's a quick example. I'm going to subgroup these four keyboards all playing different parts. Okay, let's take a listen. Put it in solo. Now let's activate the sidechain compressor. There's that modern pop sound. And sometimes we might even do a subgroup within another subgroup. Like first subgrouping three different synths so you can filter them together. But then you're rounding that subgroup to the overall subgroup for the keys or a subgroup for all the instruments. So that's one way to use subgrouping on synthesizers, mainly used in EDM, pop, and dance music. So now that we use subgrouping in electronic music, let's now look at how it's used in organic recordings like a live drum set. Getting live drums to sound great is always a real challenge and it takes some work. So I'll process each track individually so I can get the sound I want from each individual drum. So I'll subgroup the drums and then I'll put the right compressor on that bus which helps glue it all together. And then I'll do some EQ work or add some ambience or some saturation to the whole kit. When I'm using drum samples, which is most of the time, if I'm subgrouping the drums, I'll often leave the kick drum out of the subgroup. The reason for that is because the level that the kick drum needs to be at, it'll be the sound that triggers the threshold of the compressor on that group. So I'll either get a squash kick if I set the compressor the way that I like it in order to compress the rest of the drums, or if I let the kick set the threshold level for the compressor, I may not get enough compression on the rest of the drums. Which brings us to our next subgroup, 
kick and bass. Now this is something I do, I don't know if anybody else does it. Now sometimes when I really need to balance out the kick and bass, I'll subgroup them. Then I'll solo the subgroup. This allows me to notch out the same frequency in both the kick and the bass and compress them together, even though the bass might already be sidechained to the kick. It just tightens them up. Subgrouping vocals. The reason is that we don't want to have to process each track individually, especially when you can easily have 20 vocal tracks or more. So we get our panning done and set our basic balances between the vocal tracks, and then we subgroup. I like your heart and let my heart in. And from this point on, we just need to process the subgroup. And if you don't, I'll just break it. Dangers of subgrouping. Now here's a few things to watch out for when subgrouping because it can easily destroy your mix if you're not careful. Let's take a few examples. Let's say you have the keys subgrouped and they're sounding great. Now you add a new synth part and you mix it in nicely against the music. And now to finish it off, you decide to add it to the keyboard subgroup. Depending on what you're doing to that keyboard subgroup, that new keyboard sound may change drastically in volume and tone or it might affect the threshold level of the group compressor or gate, which will now change the sound of all the keys. And this could definitely happen if you're adding a kick or a bass to a subgroup. So pay close attention whenever you're adding something new to a subgroup that you've already processed. The other thing to be aware of is that because a subgroup is a mix within a mix, you're often doing your processing in solo mode. So you might have that particular group sounding awesome in solo, but when taken out of solo, it may not sit right against the rest of the music. So when you take it out of solo, make your adjustments in context of the entire mix. You could group effects together, string sections, guitars, drums, whatever. And it could definitely bring your mixing up to another level. There's so many ways to subgroup because it's really so useful when you really understand the concept and the power of subgrouping. So for more videos on music production, mixing, music career advice, please check out the rest of our channel. And like, comment, subscribe, and join our Facebook group. So until I see you, play it louder. We'll talk soon.